Happy Friday, transport nerds, and welcome to the final day of Green Bus Week. Having covered off on a short history of reduced emissions vehicles, checking out Brisbane Transport's only hybrid bus on Tuesday, a Transit Systems BYD on Wednesday, and a Brisbane Transport Utong yesterday, I wanted to finish with probably the most impressive electric bus I have caught to date. This is another BYD with Transdev in Sydney, but instead of the Gemalang body, this has a Volgren Optimus body, which I've always maintained to be one of the most modern looking designs in the market. For the Brisbane viewers, Transdev Queensland also has one of these, and it is also a very impressive bit of kit. Watch this space for a closer look at it. Inside, it looks very Optimacy, which is to say modern, crisp and fresh. Although quite plain, the dotted seat fabric is elegant and is nowhere near as ostentatious as many seat fabrics have been over the years. It adds a level of smartness to the interior that I think a modern electric bus deserves. It pairs well with the polished steel poles and the frosted glass roof hatches which contribute to a light and airy feel. This is also the first electric bus I have checked out that is wearing the new New South Wales electric bus livery, and I really like the look of it. It's unique enough to be spotted as something different, but not so different that you might mistake it for a private bus livery. From what I've seen on the forums, however, many new deliveries are returning to the standard transport for New South Wales Blue. What is hard to find though are specifications for this bus. I can find the basic specs for the K9 RA, which I checked out on Wednesday, but the newer and larger market share D9 RA doesn't seem to have any details yet. But if the specs are similar, and I have a hunch that they are, it doesn't fail to impress. So let's have a listen now.
As I'm sure you can tell, I have been quite impressed by this bus so far, and for good reason. This is the first electric bus that I've ever caught that hasn't had a compromise that I would perceive to be a good reason for most operators to knock back buying one of these. The drive line is smooth and quiet, but it's not silent and it has a very satisfying cyberpunk-like sound to it. The interior is also finished to a very high standard with comfortable seats, which considering I travelled between the Macquarie Centre and Chatswood, was much appreciated. Legroom was also decent. There were some electronic niggles on my journey, however, and both the exterior destination sign and internal display were not working properly. Still, these are fairly minor things and I'm sure that if I was to travel on that bus today, they both would have been sorted out. It leaves me thinking though, if this is how good an electric bus can be today, I cannot wait to see how the technology progresses over the coming years. Now, by no means am I approaching this vehicle with a Tesla fanboy level of interest, but this combination can handle most tasks that a conventional diesel bus can do with ease. And quite frankly, it means that for many, dare I say most urban route service applications going forward, electric is a highly viable option. It's just a shame that I can't find exact specifications, but at the very least, everything there adds up to a very convincing product. So I think that just about wraps up this bus and with it, the first green bus week series. I thoroughly enjoyed my journey on board and it was also good to sit down and have the time to prepare another bus week series since there's been a bit of a gap since the last one. So thank you for joining me on Talking Planning for Green Bus Week and I will see you again soon.